In this video, I'll talk about payment card information. Payment card types include things like credit cards, debit cards, and gift cards, to name a few. It's important that there is consumer trust for this system to work. Trust in the cards, the data stored on them, and the systems that are used to pay for services and products. It's also very convenient for consumers, even across the internet, to use a payment card to purchase something. But with good things comes bad things in terms of malicious users. Payment cards are a large portion of cybercrime, especially organized crime with different groups around the world. For example, Carter's Market is a closed group on the internet where things like credit card pins and PayPal account credentials are for sale to the highest bidder. Now, it's hard to believe that this would actually exist on the internet and anyone could connect from anywhere, but that's just it. Not anyone can connect. You have to be invited and there's very careful scrutiny by other members to make sure that it's not law enforcement trying to infiltrate these groups. And often, payment for these types of nefarious items is done through bitcoins. That's because bitcoin payments are really unregulated. However, transactions are normally publicly recorded on blockchain. But, you know, there are ways around everything. This can be circumvented through bitcoin using a tumbler or an anonymizer. Magnetic strip cards generally don't encrypt transmitted data to the terminal. Now, the reason I say general is because there are different proprietary solutions for strip cards and the terminal devices that they are used against. But generally, data is not encrypted. Magnetic strip cards can contain any type of information, really. It depends on what the creator decides to burn into the magnetic strip. Things like the type of card, account numbers, account types, the account holder name, perhaps an expiration date for the card, even a PIN or a hash of the PIN, but it varies. Chip cards, on the other hand, are also called smart cards, and they do encrypt data transmitted to the terminal. Chip cards are interesting because they actually contain a very thin microchip embedded within the card. However, these aren't quite as widely used as the magnetic strip cards yet in all parts of the world, but it is changing. The good thing about chip cards is they are much more difficult to forge than magnetic strip cards are. NFC stands for Near Field Communication. And this is a contactless payment mechanism that's becoming more and more popular. It's a short-range wireless communication, approximately 20 centers maximum, and this is one of the reasons why it can be difficult to intercept signals, because someone would have to be very, very close. However, it is possible. There are also smartphone apps that allow you to use NFC for payment, and it will automatically take funds out of a certain account through your bank or through a credit card and so on. So transmissions are encrypted. However, this is one of those things, for example, on a smartphone that you should disable if you don't use it. That's part of hardening. It's turning off things that we don't use to reduce the attack surface. PCI DSS stands for Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard. These are security standards that need to be met by merchants, financial institutions, or point-of-sale vendors that work with cardholder data, whether it's credit cards or debit cards and so on. So PCI DSS requirements include the use of network and host-based firewalls configured properly. Configured properly means that a firewall by default should deny everything and you should only allow specific things that you know should be allowed into or out of a host or a network. PCI DSS requirements also require hardening in the sense of changing system defaults like default passwords, default names of wireless networks, and so on. Transmission of cardholder data must always be encrypted, and in some cases, it will have to be encrypted as it's stored as well. Another requirement is having up-to-date anti-malware solutions running on systems related to cardholder data, and the use of unique user accounts at that specific organization, so we can track who did what at what date and time. Another requirement, and there are many beyond what we're listing here, would include restricted physical access to cardholder data itself. Now that's where the encryption of data at rest kicks in, because if by some chance a malicious user gets physical access to cardholder data, if it's encrypted, that's yet another 
hurdle that they must circumvent. And ideally, if it's strong encryption, they won't be able to crack it. Another requirement is auditing to track who's been doing what as related to cardholder information and periodic security testing. In this video, we talked about payment card information. 